All right, everybody, here's what we're going to do today. We're going to learn how to create very simple, very nice, smooth jet movement. You got your barrels, you got your loop de loops, you got nice fluid movement. We're going to do this. So, first thing, what we're going to do is we're going to go to edit, then we're going to go to project settings, and then we're going to go ahead and make sure we have our inputs the same. So, uh, yeah, all we need is look up turn, roll, and thrust, which are pretty much as they seem to be. Look up is obviously looking up. Down, turn is left and right. Roll is rotating, and then thrust is making sure we go forward. Um, so I have roll on the mouse X as well, so when I move my mouse side to side, it'll roll because that feels nice. Um, so yeah, just make sure you have similar inputs and then we'll be good to go. So I use a flying pawn asset which basically just got a epic you launch it you say hey I'd like to create a new project and you get in the flying pawn thing and then you delete everything that they have because really all you want here is the mesh so we have something that flies. So first off thing since we're right here what you're gonna wanna do is make sure you have simulate physics checked. We should be simulating physics otherwise all of the nodes we're gonna use aren't going to cut it. Also I have very custom settings for like camera lag and everything. I, I feel like it makes it feel nice so if you wanna go ahead and copy those down enable camera lag and cable, enable um, camera rotation lag and then have three for camera lag speed, ten for camera rotation speed and uh, 220 for camera max lag distance and then the initial offset is 120 for the target arm length. But now let's go ahead and get into the scripts and what I'm gonna do is be so rude and then just delete all of the stuff that I had before so I can explain exactly what I'm doing. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go to the thrust. We're gonna get a reference to our plane mesh and then we're not gonna use that yet. What we're gonna go ahead and do is get our axis value. We're gonna go ahead and multiply this by a float and we're gonna have this float be 5,000 because that is a nice number. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to clamp this float. And we want to go ahead and have a minimum va minimum value of like, uh, let's say 3,000. Which means when we're not adding input, the lowest this float can be is 3,000. So that means we will have a constant speed. And the max speed, uh, we'll just set it 10,000. We shouldn't go above 5,000 because this axis goes from 0 to 1. And it ramps up to give us our acceleration a little bit. Um... But so one times five thousand is going to be five thousand. So we basically are going to be spinning up from three thousand to five thousand. But now what we need is we need the direction. So we've got the speed right here. Now we need the direction. So we're going to do get actor um, mm, for no sorry no get actor forward vector. So we've got that all good. It's going to be great. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and drag off from our plane mesh right here and we're going to get physics linear velocity because we need to know what our current velocity is and it's going to be great. Also we need to multiply our vector times our float so that we can input the speed. So this is the magnitude that we want so speed and direction is magnitude and then this is the magnitude we currently have and now what we're going to go ahead and do is make sure that we increase to that over time and it's not just set. So we're going to lerp our vector. So, whoops, sorry about that. So from our current to what we want. And we're going to set this for point 0.1 right now. Um, you can set it to whatever you want later. This is just the values that I'm using. You don't have to use it. And then we're going to go ahead and get our plane mesh again. And then we're going to go ahead and set physics linear velocity and now we have what we want to get I haven't used add to current but I imagine what that does is it just takes this value and adds it every single time we call this which would mean we'd have a constant acceleration which is not bueno in this instance so now we have finished our thrust so I'm gonna go ahead and comment this out and comment um, it and just say thrust uh, yeah and um, we're going to go ahead and take care of event tick real quick. And basically, 
is going to be in kind of reverse order because what we're doing in event tick is going to just counteract what we're doing in turn roll and look up and that'll make sense in just a second but what we're going to go ahead and do is get physics angular velocity and this is basically our rotational speed and we need to know that so we can make sure that when we're looking up or down or turning and everything um, the way we're going to be doing this is we're going to be adding torque which unless you manually counteract that it will keep rotating so if I didn't have this and I said hey I want a barrel roll and I press just Q to rotate towards my left then I would never stop going into that cycle so we're just gonna write some code that's gonna counteract that so what we're gonna go ahead and do is negate this vector um, which I mean we could just what we're immediately going to go ahead and do is divide this by a float so I mean I guess technically we could just do like negative 20 and just remove this but I'm just gonna keep the negate thing here and then just write 20 and then um, we're going to go ahead and do set physics angular velocity whoops uh, I need to spell that right angular velocity and that's good we're, we're done with that actually no sorry I believe we are doing add torque this is adding rotation and we want to add the correct rotation and then we're gonna do acceleration change for every single one of our add torques otherwise it's just not gonna work out uh, it just generally doesn't like to work and we want things to work so um, we're Hey, a rogue comment bubble. I don't like you. Let's let's get rid of you. Um, so we're just gonna call this some um, rotation stabilization. I did spell that right? I'm proud of myself and my legibility. So good. All right. So basically, what we're gonna go ahead and do next is we're going to write one of these and then copy it and then just change which vector we're getting. And I'll explain what we're doing as we're going through. So what we're going to go ahead and do is float times float. Need to go ahead and get that and then we're going to go ahead and say uh, um, I believe the values I use is 40, 15, and 30. Could be wrong. Um, but those are basically just like different values for turning and rotation and all that. That's customized later. Just do what feels good and it'll turn out all right. So now what we need to do is this is the rule. So we need to get actor forward vector. And the reason we're doing this is because when we rotate, I'm going to use the camera for this example because this 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 isn't showing me its transform and I don't like that. So the forward vector is the x right here. And when we rotate along it, we're turning. We're doing little little barrel roll and that's nice and that's the effect we want. So we're going to go ahead and multiply the vector times this float. So vector star thing times float. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in and then what we're going to go ahead and do is lerp vector. And then we, what, what we want to do is say hey what we're going to start off is is zero. Um, and that will make sure we have a, a nice nice little um, spin starting there. And then we're going to go ahead and add torque do our plane mesh. And then we, we want to make sure that acceleration change is checked for that. It'll be checked for all of them. And then we just plug this in. That's that's really just everything right there. That's that's the entire code for all of that. And then we're just going to go ahead and copy this for our turn. It's great. And then we're going to copy this for our lookup. And then so this is going to be for our turn. We're going to do get actor up vector. And I'll, I'll explain why in just a second. Just hook all this up. And then before we go into our viewport, I'm going to go ahead and plug this one in as well. And this will be get actor right vector. And obviously plug this one in again. And remember, all of these acceleration change. 
Um, that's all good. So the reason why up vector is for turning is um, up is a Z, blue. So when we rotate, we turn this way. And then right vector for look up um, is going to be the Y. And when we do this, it's, it adjusts our pitch. So this should all be good. Of course, all of these values are really ridiculously high. Um, like I'm pretty sure I have turn as like 15, so we're going to set that. And then look up. I believe I have set for 30, so I believe it's 14, 15, 30 were fairly decent numbers. And now we're going to go ahead and test this out, and this should all be working. Yeah, everything is going fine and dandy. And that is how you do jet stuff. And the the good thing about this is because we're using set simulate physics, you can now add impulse and use gravity. So if you slow down, boom, your jet will actually start to land. So that is all bueno. Also, if you wanted to, what you would do is override this clamp so that if you want your jet to take off, this minimum value is going to prevent that. Like right now, this is saying you are going 3,000. Um, so whatever code you'd want to do to start taking off and everything, that's what you'd do. Um, but I'm not going to write that right now. This is all good. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it made sense. Hope, yeah, hope it made sense. That's good. All right. Bye.